All right, welcome to this podcast on the calculation of doses using different patient parameters. And a little background for this is that for many drugs, doses is actually determined on the basis of specific patient parameters. These can include age, body weight, and body surface area. Okay, uh, for this podcast, we will be practicing calculating drug doses, taking these factors into consideration. So of these and the ones that I'll emphasize in this podcast, we will certainly practice using some calculations on determining doses based off of both body weight and body surface area. So with that, let's get started. Now, the first calculation that we're going to work through is calculations based off of body weight. And in this example, it starts off by saying the dose of gentamicin for patients with impaired renal function is adjusted to ensure therapeutically optimal dosage. Now, before we go any further, I think we need to explain that. I think that's what makes some of these questions maybe more difficult than they need to be, is that there's some background that you really don't have, or sometimes it's very difficult to understand some of their information. So... Some additional information I would give you about gentamicin is that gentamicin is a what they call an aminoglycoside class of antibiotics, which means it kills bacteria. And in fact, it is most effective against aerobic gram-negative bacteria, which isn't important for this calculation, but it's good to know that this is an antibiotic that's going to kill some bacteria. Another important thing to know about genomycin is that makes it kind of unique or different is that it is not metabolized by any part of the body. So neither the liver or any other body tissue actually breaks the drug down. Rather, it's eliminated or removed from the body intact exclusively by the kidney. So depending on the glomerular filtration rate in the kidney or kidney function, that's the only thing that's going to remove the drug from the body. Therefore, gentamicin accumulation is likely to occur in patients with impaired renal function. If their kidneys don't work very well, the drugs are going to build up. And as such, the dose needs to be lowered in patients with reduced kidney function to avoid this drug from accumulating in the body and causing toxic effects. So if, that, if you can keep that in mind, it should make sense to you that the dose might need to be reduced or lowered in patients with reduced kidney function because without doing so, their kidneys won't function as well and the drug will accumulate. So we need to put less drug in to ensure that it doesn't accumulate up to a level that would cause toxic effects. All right. So with that in mind, now we can read the remainder of this question. Because it says, if the normal daily dose of the drug for adults is 3 milligrams per kilogram per day, administered in three divided doses, what would a single dose, that is a dose repeated every eight hours, be for a patient weighing 165 pounds and scheduled to receive only 40% of the usual dose based on their renal impairment. Okay, so there is a lot of information in, that question, in this question. So uh, I'll emphasize again, the first thing you need to do is rewrite line by line, what do we know? What are the facts that we know? And let's organize those facts. So let's start by rewriting this with what do we know about the patient? What we know about the patient is that they weigh 165 pounds and that they have renal impairment. That's all we know about the patient. That's all we need to know. Okay, what do we know about the drug? We know a lot more about the drug. We know that this drug is dosed at 3 milligrams per kilogram per day, and that total daily dose is divided into three individual doses, and those individual doses are given every eight hours. So, for example, you'd give a dose in the morning, a dose of noon, and a dose in the evening, three times a day. Okay, all right, and now, each of those individual doses, we also know, needs to only be 40% of this normal dose because of our patient's reduced renal clearance. All right. So, a lot of information, but I think we've organized it now and we can approach this problem. So, let's go on. So, on this slide, I've sh re show you the rewritten information on top and I've show you my entire calculation down below. But let's go through this step by step so you can see how to approach this. The first step is to start, since this is a dose based off on weight, let's start with this patient's body weight. So the first step we're going to do is start with the fact that the patient weighs 165 pounds. 
Okay. Our first step is to convert that weight from pounds to kilograms by multiplying by the fact that in one kilogram we have over 2.2 pounds. And again, you'll see that pounds now cancel and we'll have the units of kilograms. So 165 divided by 2.2 gives us weight in kilograms. The next step is to multiply their weight in kilograms by the dosing schedule. And the dosing schedule is 3 milligrams per kilogram per day. And by multiplying in this way, we can see that the units will of kilogram will cancel and I'll be in milligrams per day. All right. The next step is to go from milligrams per day to milligrams per dose. And we do this by using the fact that in every day, so in one day, there are going to be three doses. So one day over three doses, you can see the units of day will cancel. And now we'll be in milligrams per dose, which is what we want. But at this point, we're still in milligrams per dose for a normal patient, one where we haven't considered renal impairment. But our patient has renal impairment. So our last step here is to multiply the normal dose essentially by 40%. And what this is saying is that if a normal patient needs 100 milligrams, then a patient with renal impairment would only need 40% of that. So they would only get 40 milligrams. So I've multiplied this by the ratio of saying on top is 40 milligrams of the drug for a patient with renal impairment over the 100 milligrams a patient with a normal kidney function would need. So that's where when we multiply that all the way across, we'll get the milligrams that a patient with renal impairment would need. So if you do all of this math, which is 165 divided by 2.2, times 3 divided by 3 and then times 40 divided by 100 do the math all the way across and you can see that our patient with their renal impairment would need to get 30 milligrams per dose so they'll get 30 milligrams in the morning 30 milligrams at noon and 30 milligrams in the evening so 30 plus 30 plus 30 would give us our final total daily dose of 90 milligrams divided into 30 milligrams given three times a day. So that's how we would answer that question. And the final total, the final dose per amount per dose is 30 milligrams. Okay, now let's move on to the next question. The next question is a continuation of gentamicin. It's not the same patient, so it's not the same scenario, but I chose it because it still talks about gentamicin and another important aspect about many drugs, including gentamicin. So a little background before we read the question is that gentamicin can actually cause serious dose-related side effects, including kidney toxicity or damage to the kidney, and actually irreversible hearing loss. So it's important to ensure that these patients receive the correct dose and are actually monitored regular, regularly to make sure the drug levels are within the range that they need to be. Now keep in mind that gentamicin's bacterial activity is also concentration dependent and that monitoring drug concentration in the body helps minimize drug toxicity by avoiding high levels while also ensuring efficacy, that is, it will actually work as an antibiotic, by keeping levels from going too low. So, knowing that genomycin is a drug that has to be dosed in a way that the levels are high enough to be effective, but also low enough to not be toxic. And there are many other drugs like that, but gentamicin certainly is an example of that type of drug. So, now, let's read this question. It says, if the administration of gentamicin at a dose of 1.75 milligrams per kilogram is determined to result in a peak blood serum level of 4 micrograms per milliliter, then calculate a dose in milligrams for a 120 pound patient that may be expected to result in a blood serum gentamicin level of 4.5 micrograms per milliliter. Once again, there seems to be a lot of stuff going on here, so let's rewrite this. So I rewrite this, and what do I know about the patient? All I know about the patient is that the patient weighs 120 pounds. What do I know about the drug? So let me restate it. What we know about the drug is that if we give this patient 1.75 milligrams per kilogram, and we give them that dose, that would produce an expected blood level of 4 micrograms per milliliter. 
okay but in this example for some reason that dose that blood level isn't high enough so what I want to know is what would the dose need to be to give them a blood level of 4.5 micrograms per milliliter so obviously the 4 micrograms per milliliter isn't high enough it's not therapeutic we want to give a higher dose right so to be able to get a higher blood level of 4.5 micrograms per milliliter now all of this and this is an important assumption going forward before we actually try to solve this question is there's a big assumption here we are assuming that the drug concentration in the blood is directly proportional to the drug dose so that is if I elevate the drug dose I will also elevate the drug concentration and in this question we are going to make that assumption in many cases that is a true assumption but not in all cases in fact you're going to get to enjoy two whole semesters of courses that deal with this problem specifically both your pharmacokinetics and clinical pharmacokinetics courses are devoted to helping you understand how drugs should be dosed so that you can get a specific drug concentration in the body that you need because not all drugs are so simple as the one we're doing this example but in this example we are going to simplify and say that the drug dose and the drug level or concentration in the blood are directly proportional so that is an important assumption to go forward but with that assumption let's go forward all right so this slide just uh, shows you the the rewritten information and reminds you of the assumption so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing we need to do to answer this question I've, is to set up a proportion I've showed you my equation here but let me explain where this proportion comes from so what we're going to do is start on the left hand side with what we do know and let's set up a, re, uh, a relationship of the facts that we do know what we know is that a dose of 1.75 milligrams per kilogram on top will give you and what I've shown on the bottom a blood concentration of four micrograms per milliliter that was given to us in, a, in the question and we need to understand that's a relationship if you give the dose on top you get the blood concentration on the bottom so that's where that was set up from so we're going to set up that proportion and set that equal to the same relationship but in a different scenario but in this new scenario what we don't know is the dose so what I don't know is the dose it takes so on top I put X milligrams per kilogram because I don't know what dose I need but what I do know on the bottom is that it needs to produce a blood concentration of 4.5 micrograms per milliliter okay so since I know on the left that 1.75 uh, milligrams per kilogram produces a blood concentration of four micrograms per milliliter and since we're assuming that this is a directly proportional relationship I can set that equal to some unknown dose on top over a desired drug con a blood concentration of 4.5 micrograms per milliliter so now at this point we just need to algebraically solve for X so we're going to cross multiply and so we get 4x and set that equal to 1.75 times 4.5 gives us a value of 7.875 so we get this by cross multiplying now we can solve for x by dividing both sides by 4 and we see that x now is 1.69 and what that number represents is that x means that we need 1.69 milligrams per kilogram dose in this patient to produce a 4.5 micrograms per milliliter blood concentration so we have the dosing that we need but now we need the last our next step is to calculate the actual dose for this patient okay so to do that we'll I'll show you my work and start on the left hand side the fact that we know this patient weighs 120 pounds so the first step now is to convert the 120 pounds to kilograms by dividing it by 2.2 so that will cancel the units of pounds and to put us into units of kilograms now we have the patient's weight in kilograms we can multiply it by the dose that we just calculated that we need which is 1.969 milligrams per kilogram by multiplying these weights in kilograms you can see weights will cancel and our final answer for this patient will be 107.4 milligrams dose so if we give this patient who weighs 120 pounds 107.4 milligrams that would give us the dose needed to produce a 4.5 micrograms per mil blood level in them
And that's the final answer to this question. All right. Moving on to the next question is an interesting one about still on body weight, but it gives it in a slightly different context in one of compounding a prescription. All right. A little bit of information before we interpret the prescription. And let's just talk about the drug. And the drug in this example is metronidazole. And metronidazole is a synthetic antibiotic, but it also has antiprotozole activity, which actually makes it a useful in a variety of different types of infections. So you'll see metronidazole dispensed quite frequently. Now, orally, it is available as both a tablet and a capsule. However, a commercially prepared oral suspension is not available, so it's only either a tablet or a capsule. So in this question, if we look at the on top there for Jimmy Jones, the first thing we can see about Jimmy Jones is he's eight years of age. Okay, So in this case, what's happening is that the pharmacist is being asked to compound an oral suspension, a liquid, suitable for a child who is either too young to swallow a tablet or capsule, or who needs a dose that's not uh, commercially available using the, the tablets and capsules. And this is not uncommon. Keep in mind that swallowing pills, it, whether it's a tablet or a capsule, is a skill that many kids don't learn until they're about 10 years of age. So in this case, we're assuming that Jimmy Jones here isn't old enough to know how to swallow a tablet or capsule. So we need to take a medicine that only comes in tablets or capsules and turn it into a liquid. That is, we're going to compound a suspension. All right, so now let's read and interpret the prescription. As we said already, the patient's name is Jimmy Jones, and we know he's eight years old, and we also now know that he weighs 88 pounds. And what the doctor wants us to do is to compound a suspension of metronidazole and dose him in a way that he gets 7.5 milligrams per kilogram per day. Okay, now the dose that he's going to get every time he swallows something is the amount he needs per dose needs to be formulated in a volume of 5 milliliters. So we don't know how many milligrams yet, but we know for every dose the milligrams have to be contained in a volume of 5 milliliters. And lastly, if we read the SIG or the instruction for the patients from the prescriber, we see that the prescriber wants Jimmy to take 5 milliliters per dose and to do that twice a day for a total duration of 10 days. All right. And now down below here, you can see there are going to be three parts to these questions. And I'll come back to that here in a minute. But before we go any further, it's a lot of information. So like I said, let's rewrite what we know even just at this point. What we know is that Jimmy Jones weighs 88 pounds. That's what's important about Jimmy. What we know about the drug is, is that the dosing for this drug is 7.5 milligrams per kilogram per day, okay? But that in a day, we need to provide the total daily dose into two doses. This is not a drug that can only be dosed once a day. Given that way the drug works, we have to give the total daily dose divided into two equal doses. And those two doses per day have to be repeated for a total of 10 days to do a complete course of an antibiotic treatment to make sure the bacteria or the protozoal doesn't come back. And lastly, each dose now, we know we're doing two doses per day, each dose has to be in a total volume of 5 milliliters. All right. All that said, then we're going to answer these three questions. And we'll go through each of these questions one at a time on the next slide. So given enough of this interpretation and what we've rewritten, we have enough to kind of approach this question. So let's start answering this question. All right, so this slide again shows you our summarized information on top. And let's start with the first question. The first question asks, how many milligrams of metronidazole will the patient receive per dose? We know the volume is 5 milliliters per dose, but we don't, we haven't calculated yet how much drug needs to be in that 5 milliliters. So that's the first step. So to do this, we're going to start with our weight-based dosing. So again, I've shown the entire formula here, and we'll go through it step by step. The first step is to take his weight of 88 pounds and convert that to kilograms. We do that by dividing by 2.2. Pounds cancel, and we'll now have units of kilogram. So now we have his weight in kilograms. The next step is to convert the weight to the amount of drug by using the dosing schedule of 7.5 milligrams per kilogram per day. All right. So now kilograms cancel and we'll be in the milligrams per day. 
all right but we don't want per day we want per dose so the next step is to convert from milligrams per day by multiplying that in every one day there are going to be two doses this way the day unit cancels and we'll get milligrams per dose which is what we want and if we do that math we take 88 divide by 2.2 multiply by 7.5 and then lastly divide by 2 that should calculate out to 150 and that's milligrams per dose which is the answer to question a or part a i should say okay let's move on to part b part b asks how many milliliters of the prescription should be prepared and dispensed so now we're not worried about the weight or the dose of the drug in milligrams. We need to know the volume that is going to have to be prepared and dispensed. So where do we start with this question? Well, the total volume will depend on the total duration. So let's start with the fact, and I show the entire formula here, but it really starts with the fact that the volume we need to dispense has to last this patient 10 days. So let's start with 10 days. All right, so the first step is to start with 10 days and convert that to the number of doses in the 10 days. So we'll take 10 days times the fact that there are two doses per day. Days cancel and we'll have the number of doses. The next step is using the fact that we know the prescriber wants each dose to have 5 milliliters. So we multiply this by the fact that every 5 milliliters over every dose. Each dose has 5 mils. And we set it up that way so that doses cancel and our final units will be in milliliters. So if we take 10 days times 2 doses per day times 5 milliliters per dose gives us a total volume to prepare and dispense of 100 milliliters. Okay. The last part, letter C, asks, if metronidazole is available in 250 milligram tablets, how many tablets will be needed to fill the prescription? Okay. So for the, to, to, for the whole volume to be dispensed, how, many, how much metronidazole will be in that, and therefore how many tablets will we need to prepare that amount of metronidazole? That's kind of what the question is asking. This one, I think, can be difficult to set up again, but it really, I re try to restate it because it's asking for essentially the total amount of drug. So let's start with the total amount of drug will be based off of the total duration of the treatment. So once again, we need to start with the fact that we're dispensing a suspension that's going to last for 10 days. So let's start again with 10 days and convert that just like we did before to the number of doses. So 10 days times two doses per day tells us how many doses per day. Now unlike our previous letter B question, we're not worried about volume here. I want to know how much drug. So the next part is to multiply by the fact that we know that every dose is going to have 150 milligrams. That was our answer to letter A above. So if we multiply by 150 milligrams over one dose, then the units of dose cancel and now we're in milligrams, in milligrams of metronidazole. The last step to answer this question isn't the total amount of drug, but the number of tablets needed to provide that amount. So let's multiply it by the fact that in every one tablet on top, set that over the fact that each tablet contains 250 milligrams of drug. And that came from the question that we are using 250 milligram tablets. And we set it up with one tablet over 250 milligrams so that the units of milligram cancel and our final answer will have the units of tablets. So in this, if we do the math of 10 days times 2 times 150, Divided by 250, if we do, we'll go straight across with the arithmetic, we should be able to calculate the correct answer of 12 tablets. That's how many tablets it will take to prepare a 100 milliliter suspension that will have 150 milligrams per every 5 milliliters, which is a dose. And we'll do many more of these types of calculations when, in the semester where we learn how to do compounding. All right, the next question is now an important transfer. So we're switching topics. Up to this point, the, ones, the three questions we've done so far have all been dealing with drug dosing based off of body weight. We are now going to do some calculations to calculate drug dose based off of body surface area. Okay, so an important transition here. And what's important to keep in mind that a patient's weight is an important factor in dosing since the size of the body influences the drug's concentration in the body fluids and at its site of action. 
Dose calculations based off body weight, though, have become the standard for many drugs. However, not all drugs. And there's an important exception to this weight-based dosing. And that is the use of body surface area, often abbreviated as BSA. And that this is method for calculating drug doses uh, in really two main groups. And it's commonly used for cancer patients receiving chemotherapy, but also for pediatric patients. And for many clinical purposes, the BSA, or body surface area, is a better indicator of metabolic mass, that is, the mass of the body that's going to use a particular drug, than body weight, because body weight is oftentimes more affected by having excess amounts of fat that are oftentimes not metabolic and then don't actually need the drug. Okay, And unfortunately, errors have occurred when chemotherapeutic agents were incorrectly dosed using weight instead of body surface area because of the extra body fat leading to extra drug and that extra drug producing toxic effects. So while it's not commonly used, it is commonly used in a very small number of situations like chemotherapy and pediatrics. But in those cases, making mistakes and using the wrong dosing schedule can have uh, very uh, unfortunate effects. So that has enough background. Let's just do the calculations. Just know that there are definitely going to be times where you want to calculate a, a dose of a drug based off of its body surface area. So in this question, if the daily dose of a drug is given in the literature as 8 milligrams per kilogram based on body weight, or alternatively 350 milligrams per meter squared based off of body surface area, then calculate the dose for each of these bases for a patient who weighs 150 pounds and who measures 5 feet 8 inches tall. My first preface before we do the math here is understand this is not a common example. For most drugs, you're not given both a body weight dosing schedule and a body surface area dosing schedule. It's typically one or the other. In this case, we're giving you both so that we can show you for the same patient that the doses actually do calculate out to be very different. So not a common example, but we can do it. All right, so our first step, like any other, is to rewrite the information and list out what we know. So what we know about the patient is that the patient weighs 150 pounds and stands 5 feet 8 inches in height. All right. What we know about the drug is, is that it is dosed on body weight at 8 milligrams per kilogram, or alternatively based on body surface area at 350 milligrams per meter squared. Okay, so that's been given to us in the question. What we also need to know before doing our calculations is how to calculate body surface area. And there's nomograms and there's also then the formula. And so what we're going to do in this question and what you really just need to kind of buckle down and memorize is the most stellar formula for calculating body surface area. And it's the one given in the textbook and it's simply this. You take a patient's height in centimeters times their weight in kilograms, divide that value by 3,600, and then take the square root. So if you do that and do that math correctly, you are calculating then this patient's body surface area, whose units now will be in metered squared. Okay, and this is just a formula that's worth memorizing. It's not difficult, but keep in mind as we go on to the, and actually solve for this patient, it does require the height and weight to be in specific units. So let's go ahead and start for this patient. So on this slide, on the left-hand side, I've rewritten the information that we've already known. And I've gone ahead and laid out the calculations that we're going to need to perform leading up to the body surface area. So let's just do those quickly. And we said for body surface area, you need the patient's height in centimeters. So the first step is to convert it to inches. So what I did is I took 5 feet times 12 inches per foot to calculate that this patient has 60 inches from the 5 feet plus an additional 8 inches. So 5 foot 8 is basically saying 60 inches plus 8 inches for a total height of 68 inches. All right. Now we've got to convert the 68 inches into centimeters. And we just do that by multiplying by the conversion factor of 2.54 centimeters per inch. When we multiply that, we get a total height of 172.7 centimeters. All right. 
Step one, done. Step two is to express their weight in kilograms. So we take their weight of 150 pounds, multiply it by the conversion factor of one kilogram for every 2.2 pounds. So we divide by 2.2 pounds, units cancel, and we get a total weight of 68.2 kilograms. Now we have height in centimeters and weight in kilograms. We're ready to go ahead and use our most stellar formula to calculate the body surface area. So in this example, we take the 172.2 centimeters times the 68.2 kilograms, divide that by 3,600, and take the square root of that, and your value should be 1.8, and the units would be in metered squared. So this patient's body surface area is 1.8 metered squared. Now we're ready to finally answer the question, which was to calculate the dose of this drug based off first body weight. And so we take their body weight of 68.2 kilograms times the dosing rate of 8 milligrams per kilogram. So kilograms cancel. And you get a final dose of 545.6 milligrams. That's pretty straightforward. So is the body surface area. So the body surface area calculation says to do uh, the body surface area for this patient was 1.8 meters squared. And we multiply that by the dosing rate of 350 milligrams per meter squared. You can see meters squared cancel. And the answer for this then would be 630 milligrams. So pretty straightforward. And I'll just leave you with the fact that the dosing amounts for both body weight and body surface area are very different. If you look at the first part of uh, the weight of 68.2 kilograms is two of the same patients actually body surface area of 1.8. So those numbers are different. Oftentimes you get very different resulting doses. So it's just very important to make sure you are calculating the dose off of the correct formula. If it's based off of body weight, use the body weight. But if it is one of the select drugs that bases their dose off of body surface area, make sure you correctly use body surface surface area to calculate that dose. All right, and we'll see that one last time with our last question. So a more realistic example of using body surface area to calculate a uh, actual drug dose is to use a chemotherapy chemotherapy example. So in this question it says, among the single chemotherapy agents used for breast cancer, docetaxel, uh, by, used by the brand name Taxotere, is administered at 40 milligrams per meter square, and it's given intravenously or IV once a week for six weeks. Then that's followed by a two week rest period and then the entire cycle is repeated. The question wants to know and wants us to calculate the total dose administered during the initial six week period to a specific patient who stands five foot four inches in height and weighs 160 pounds. Additionally, and this I would refer to the picture of the vial here on the lower right, it wants to know how many milliliters from this drug vial would be necessary. And again, keep in mind this drug vial has a concentration of 80 milligrams for every 2 milliliters. It wants to know what volume would it take to actually prepare a dose. So those are the questions we are going to answer. First thing to do, though, is let's rewrite the information. So what do we know about the patient? We know that the patient is weighs 160 pounds and stands 5 foot 4 inches in height. What else do we know about the drug is that it's based, the dosing is based off of body surface area, and the dose is 40 milligrams per meter squared. We also know that this is dosed only one time per week for six weeks in a row. Okay, so it's once weekly for six weeks. And then lastly, to calculate the volume, we know that the drug concentration in the vial is going to be 80 milligrams for every two milliliters. So that's all the information I extracted from the question, set it up kind of line by line, organized patient information, organized the drug information. Now we can start and actually approach this question. So what's the first thing we're going to do is since the dosing is based off of body surface area, let's calculate the body surface area. Remember, there are a lot of steps to get to that point. So the first thing I'm going to do is convert the height. First, I need to go from five foot four inches into just inches. 
So 5 foot times 12 inches per foot gives me 60 inches, plus the additional 4 inches means this patient stands a total of 64 inches in height. Let's convert that to centimeters by taking 64 inches times the conversion factor of 2.54 centimeters per inch means this patient stands a total height of 162.6 centimeters. Now, let's go to their weight. What I need to do is convert their weight of 160 pounds into kilograms by multiplying it by the conversion factor where every one kilogram has 2.2 pounds, pounds cancel, and I see that this patient weighs 72.7 kilograms. Now that I have the height in centimeters and the weight in kilograms, I can actually solve for their body surface area by using the most stellar formula and taking their height of 162.2 centimeters times their weight of 72.7 kilograms, taking that answer and dividing it by 3,600, and then taking the square root of that answer and calculating the fact that this patient's body surface area is 1.81 metered squared. Now I can actually address what the question wants, which is to calculate the total dose. Okay, and I'm going to do that first by calculating the weekly dose. So each week, this patient is going to receive for a body surface area of 1.81 meters squared. I'm going to multiply that by the dosing amount, which is 40 milligrams per meter squared. So meter squares will cancel. And if I take 1.81 times 40, I can see that each dose would be 72.4 milligrams based off of their body surface area. Now that's the dose though each week. So the total dose is going to be the weekly dose of 72.4 milligrams times the six weeks that they're going to be treated with that dose. So 72.4 times 6 gives me a total dose of 434.4 milligrams total. And that's the answer to the first part of this question. The second part of this question, though, did ask us to calculate the drug volume from the vial that it would take to prepare a dose. So remember, a dose, a single weekly dose for this patient is 72.4 milligrams. Now we're going to multiply that by the concentration expressed as in every 2 milliliters on top, that contains 80 milligrams of drug. And I did that so that you can see the units of milligram will cancel and I will get a total value or a resulting unit of milliliters. So 72.4 milligrams times 2 milliliters divided by 80 milligrams so that milligrams cancel results in a total volume of 1.81 milliliters per dose. So this patient will be injected with intravenously 1.81 milliliters of this additive that provides a total of 72.4 milligrams of drug and they're going to receive that once a week and do that for six weeks and end up with a total dose of the 434.4 milligrams. Well, hopefully you found this podcast useful in uh, practicing some of the practice problems when it comes to calculating a dose for a patient using specific parameters. And what we did in this podcast was go through some examples using both body weight and body surface area.